Hello, everyone. Uh, reason for this presentation or uh, this short recording is that, uh, like, but uh, I'm involved in both undergrad and postgrad teaching, and many students, especially postgrad students, ask me how to read these like but textbooks, right? So I will go through the chapter one of contemporary orthodontics by profit, and uh, I will tell you how to like but go through it, how to make notes from it, right? So let me share this. Okay. So something uh, I learned uh, during my postgrad days from someone, one of my mentor, that if you go through a book with a good, like, but uh, if you're totally committed, like, but near the exams, you cannot complete more than 40 pages, right? If you read every lines. So the theme is that you should make notes, that all one should make notes because the first day, like, but if you're reading a book the first day and you're totally committed and you have the complete day and you're reading like, like, but something like 10 hours per day uh, for this book, you can cannot read more than 80 pages, right? If it's the fifth or sixth day uh, time, sorry, then you cannot read more than 40 pages with complete concentration, right? Understanding everything and memorizing everything. So the theme is that go through this book a couple of times then start highlighting important things, right? And keep it in the form of notes, either highlight it on the book or the best practices that write those things on a page and make notes of every chapter, right? So as I've read this book many times, uh, frankly, I read a fourth edition uh, more than any other edition because that edition was available in my postgrad days. So anyway, I will go through uh, this chapter and try to tell you that uh, how to make like what uh, keep important things uh, as far as postgrad uh, like what exams, uh, both theory and written uh, like what theory and viva is concerned. So I will use my highlight tool. So crowded, irregular, and uh, protruding teeth have been a problem for some individuals since antiquity, and attempts to correct this disorder go back to at least 1000 BC. Something not important, right? Primitive and surprising well-designed orthodontic plan have been found in both Greek and uh, it uh, drew sh sh uh, materials. A dentistry developed in the 18th and 19th century. A number of devices for regulation of teeth were described by various authors and apparently used separately by the dentists of that era. So might be like what someone asking a viva question at undergrad level to someone, but the first para is simply not important, right? In the long run, I do not need this para, right? After 1850, the first text that uh, systematically described orthodontic, uh, orthodontics appeared, the most no uh, notable being Norman Kingsley, oral and dental deformities. Kingsley, who had a tremendous influence on American dentists in the later half of 19th century, was among the first to use extraoral forces to correct to the teeth. So for a C1 MCQ, right, for like it might be a first year uh, student, someone can give this like what who developed uh, extra oral, right, appliances. So it was basically Kingsley. Uh, let me, okay. That was Kingsley, right, something in 19th century. So he was amongst the first. He was not the first, among the first. But sometimes they give it like what extra oral appliances had keys and for a C1 level MCQ, right, like for the basic memory check type MCQ. He was also the pioneer in the cleft lip and related problems. So might be someone say this one, but this is something not important for the postgrad, right? But you can keep it for a C1 level MCQ, sometime for the undergrad students, uh, especially the Asian uh, examiners used to give these lines. Despite the contribution of Kingsley and his contemporaries, this emphasis remained the alignment of the teeth and correction of facial proportion. Late attention was paid to by relationship because it was commonly practiced to remove teeth for many dental problems, extraction for crowded or metal line teeth were frequent. In an era when in, an intact dentition was rarity, the details of a clean reason were considered unimportant, something not important for us. You can read it, but this is something not to remember for the purpose of exams, for the purpose of MCQs, right? To make good prostatic replacement uh, uh, teeth, 
it was necessary to develop a concept of occlusion this up in late 1800 the concept of prosthetic occlusion developed and were refined it was natural to extend this to the natural dentition edward engel whose influence began to felt 1890 can be credited with much of the development of the concept of occlusion in natural dentition engel original interest was in prosthodontics and he taught in that department in dental school in pennsylvania right 1800 something his increasing interest in dental occlusion and in dental treatment necessity to obtain normal occlusion led directly to this development of orthodontic especially in cell the fall of modern orthodontics so sometime for the sake of discussion sometime like what they said okay who was engel something like that so engel is considered as the father of modern orthodontics right sometime as a extra like what uh, uh discussion during the viva exam right so that line can be used right otherwise it do not have any importance as far as the theory or the mcqs are concerned engel classification of malocle in 1890 was an important step in the development of orthodontics because it's not only subdivided so angle classified malocclean we know this class 1 2 and 3 this was 1890s a c1 level mcqs in some exams for the uh, like what mds level or uh, other levels the fellowship level exams but at a basic level right angle postulate was that upper molars were the key for occlusion and the upper and the lower molars should be related to that related so that the mesobuccal cusp for the upper molar occlude in the buccal groove of the lower molar so we all know that this is important i'm not going to highlight it here because i know that there is a classification given underneath so angle uh, was like what uh, if the teeth were arranged on smooth line of coming line of occlusion and this more relationship existed the normal occlusion would result right this statement which Hundred years of experience have proved to be correct, except when there are aberration. Uh, sorry, aber uh, aberrations uh, in the size of the teeth. Bilateral simplified uh, normal occlusion. So something not important. Just like what Engler's classification was given in eighteen ninety, right? And then, so these are the a closer relationship of the first molars, right? And then we have to go through all these things like what. that these all are important right so normal occlusion class 1 2 3 3 occlusion normal occlusion and class 1 malocle occlusion share the same or relationship but differ in the arrangement of teeth relative to the line of occlusion the line of occlusion may or may not be correct in class 2 or class 3 cases so we have to see what is a line of occlusion so this is basically the line of occlusion i'm not going through this definition but this is something you need to memorize it so the line of occlusion curve passing through the central fossa of each upper arc molars and across the cingulum of the upper canine and incisor teeth the same line runs across the buccal cusp so anyway the line of occlusion need to be memorized both for the undergrad and the postgrad students right so this is important here and also sometimes some students also draw this picture right so you can practice it uh, if you are at the first year uh post grad level that you must know what is the line of occlusion and what is the motor relationship right and sometimes like what i told you that you should remember class 1 2 and 3 and also like what if they have given it class 1 occlusion uh, normal relationship but line of because okay they haven't given this terms neutral occlusion mesial occlusion here so i will not go in the details i just want to tell you how to read it with the establishment of concept of normal occlusion the classification scheme that incorporated the line of occlusion by the 19 orthodontics were no longer just the alignment of irregular teeth instead it evolved with okay with the emphasis on dental occlusion that followed how less attention came to the pay to the facial occlusion strategy angle abandoned extraoral fossa because he decided he was not necessary to achieve proper occlusion relationship he solved the problem of dental and facial appearance by simply postulating that best always was achieved when the patient has ideal occlusion as the time passes so this line can come uh, this line can come if something is like what uh, for the occlusion right mm -hmm. as the time passed it became clear that even an excellent uh, occlusion was unsatisfactory if it was achieved at the expense of proper facial proportions so 
the last line was also for something discussion in, uh, for Viva, right? So, Uh, at the time, it became clear that even an uh, excellent agreement was unnecessary. Uh, it was achieved at the expense of uh, proper proportion, not only about these uh, aesthetic problems. It often proved impossible to maintain an occlusive relationship or achieve a prolonged use of heavy elastics, blah, blah, blah. Under the leadership of Charles Street and United States and Diamond Bank in Australia, both whom had studied in Angle, right? So, extraction teeth was reintroduced in Arthur around 1914 15, now special aesthetic. So, again, something for the sake of discussion in viva not for written right or debate versus extraction non-extraction you can also write it in the written in some uh, uh SAQs, right so this is something important here cephalometric radiography enabled uh, authorities to measure the changes into the position came into widespread use after world war ii radiograph are not clear that many classroom molecules resulted from the quality are not by the use of circuit it was also possible to tap Altered, but in Europe, the method of function geography was developed to enhance the growth changes while extraordinary forces came to use for the At present, both functional and extraordinary appliances are used. So, again, for the sake of discussion, that in Europe there was functional jaw orthopedics, while in the United States it was extraordinary forces used more. Just for the sake of discussion, might be in some viva at some conference intellectual levels. Otherwise, it's not something important for written MCQs, right? So nothing important here. The soft tissue paradigm. So they have explained it here. The paradigm can be defined as a set of uh, shared beliefs and assumptions that represent the conceptual foundation of area of science and clinical practice. So I will highlight it that what is a paradigm, right? Because some mission examiners, you know, they go for these memory checks. So they might give it uh, a question like this, what is a paradigm and explain between soft and hard tissue paradigm. The soft tissue paradigm states that both are goals of goals and limitation of the orthodontic and orthogenetic uh, treatment determined by soft tissue of the face, not by the teeth and bones. Right. So comparing goal diagnosing of with the soft tissue paradigm, the increased focus on the clinical. I will also try to highlight it just because, but you can remember it in your own words, right? So you can remember these initial lines. The primary goal of the treatment becomes soft tissue relationship and adaptation, not angle ideal opinion. So these things are written here, but again, you have to memorize this table, right? And in the exam, uh, like what if someone is going to ask, if there's a sort of discussion, this table is more than enough. So you can give a read. Uh, to this part, right? Because the same is written uh, above it. But eventually the table is more than enough to memorize, right? The border goal is not uh, incompatible with angle ideal opinion, but acknowledge that the provide maximum benefit of the patient. Ideal opinion cannot always be the major focus of treatment plan. Soft tissue relationship, both the proportion of the soft tissue, integument of the face, and the relationship of dentition to the lip and face are the major determining facial appearance. Soft tissue adaptation to tissue adaptation to the position of teeth or lack they could determine whether the result will be stable. Mind controlling is critically important, right? So all these things are explained there, like what primary goal, treatment goals, ideal dental, normal soft tissue, proportion and adaptation. So as I told you, you can give a read to it, write two or three lines for these points, but eventually if you make a table or if you memorize the table, that is more than enough to solve such questions, right? So nothing important in these lines, right? Just a read, and that's more than enough just to clear your concept, memorize the table, that like what the soft tissue is important. If you do not achieve the soft tissue, the facial aesthetic won't be achieved, right? Things like that. So I will skip this one. I told you, you can give a read and write two or three lines in simple terms for yourself while making the notes. Now this part. 
ideal uh, angle ideal of Lyon Moore uh, probably should be considered the uh, should be considered the ideal. In fact, perfect interdecision teach arranging a perfected line of Lyon are quite rare. For many years, evidence studies have found considerable um, a investigator about how much deviation from ideal of Lyon should be accepted within the bounds of normal. By the 1970s, series of studies not important, right? In United States. Uh, you can give a read to these things, right? I've went through this many times. So there's nothing like that is important, right? Give a read, take the basic definitions. So you're regulating index, which is measure the incisor alignment, right? The prevalence of medium larger than two millimeter and the prevalence of posterior cross by indication of jet and over bite open bite or measured object reflection class two, okay, not important. Correct matter for the children. And figure 10 that age of 10 years, near 50 those adults are severely extreme in the often present in childhood. There's six times greater to me, although the space. Okay. So this is important. Usually expert in regularity index. So you have to go through these lines, right? Remember the definition inside the regularity index. And uh, spontaneous correction child is most likely when it is less than two millimeters. So the patient on borderline. And it, so this is also important, right? Like, but if it's more than two millimeter, one need correction. Like, but in some British book, it's written more than four millimeter and you need to intervene, right? So, like, but these lines are important as far as some MCQs are concerned. When the maxillary posterior teeth are lingually posterior related to the mandibular teeth. So this is definition of a cross bite, right? Here, so this is something important. Again, OJ definition important. Again, um, like what over bite definitions here, right? Open bite definition here important, right? Classification of OJ important. Sorry, classification of inside the regularity that is important. And uh, Percentage of population not okay. Uh, according to the NS data, it's up a nine percent population from the central vaccine, nine point wipes and nine percent OJET or reverse OJET indicate anti posterior deviation in class two and class three interactions. In class three belong to less uh, normal jet is two millimeter. We already went through the definition, so I'm not. Anyway, you can highlight this MCQ. OJ of five minutes more suggesting class two malocalian occurs in 23% of the children. So for the sake of incidents and communication stations, uh, you can keep it with you, right? They reflect greater postnatal growth of the mandible than the maxilla. Swears class two problem or less prevalent than class three problems. So, from other books, you can uh, like would go through the incidence vertical deviation from the ideal overbite of zero to one millimeter. So this is ideal overbite of less frequent adults than children do up in half of the adults. So these are the basic definitions. Like what uh, might be at my level, these are not important. But when you do not know the definition of overjet overbite, there's something important. So again, like what we went through this classification, so I'm not, I'm highlighting it again, by moderate sphere. Again, like what here we have this classification for open bite, right, versus deep bite, that is important. Classification for over jet, that is important, right? Uh, nothing is important in these paragraphs. Uh, you can keep some incidents, but it's very hard to remember those incidents. For remembering incidents, I prefer visual notes more than these pages, right? For the sake of research, someone can go for it. So some of the incidents mentioned here. 30% uh, are most abnormal occlusion, right? This is important here for the sake of communication incidents, right? 50-55%, they're almost half as... 15% class two and class three less than 1%. That is for the American. We know that there is a difference in the British and American for the incident, sorry. 
Okay, you have been designed for 25 children in Denmark to go to class to Melopolin, where it's class 3 from the most prevalent Asian population. Uh, 3 to 5 percent in Japan, nearly 2 percent. And 2 to 3 percent pseudo class 3, shifting the entire class part. So it is basically a pseudo class 3 definition here that is important. Which is but difference found in general between the blacks and the white is likely open bite are more frequent. Okay. Open bite are more frequent in the African than the Japan and deep bite less frequent. Okay. So that is important when it's come to communication stations, these things, or sometimes see one level MCQs. Okay. Crowded and irregular teeth now occur majority of the people because the mandibula tends to become separate from the rest of the skull when the long bite remains unhealthy. It is easier to show that what happened alignment of teeth into the relationship. The skeletal remains suggested that all members of a group might be tend toward a class three or less commonly class two jaw relationship. Right. Like what they are showing that class three is more like genetic. I will keep it. Similar findings are noted in the present population group that have remained largely unaffected by modern. Uh, crowding and male alignment of a majority of the group might display as class three tendency, selfish and buckle segment. So that is X occlusion. Sometimes they used to give this question, what is X occlusion? You can see the basic citation, like what is sort of Caesar pi unilateral. So this is something like what you should highlight and see the extra definition. What is this? The rest is not important. The rest need a single go of like what reading, right? You don't need to read these things close to the exam. Right, because a single read is more than enough to keep the concept. Or you can write like a two or three small short lines for them, but near the exam, reading these lines would be a waste of time. That's why I'm saying that make notes, keep the important things in the notes, and write some few points in the middle of the lines because they are not very important. And if you're reading it close to the exam, that's a pure waste of time for you. For example, there has been steady reduction. So, like what I went through these paragraphs before. So, the main theme is that two things, like what they say that uh, this malocline is a disease of civilization. If I take a summary of them, one, like what the parents, um, uh, like what the children previously, like what there was a culture of tribes and families, marriages. Now, like what more interracial marriages and like what the child might get a smaller job from one parent and a larger teeth from the other parent. So they would be malocolian. The second thing is that children are eating soft diets, right? So they have given these examples of aboriginals who are giving hard diets, and they have this natural atrium of teeth, right? And atrium, uh, like what uh, redundant, and due to that, there was reduction and there was less crowding, right? So these two things, like what the this is main definition of the crunch of all these like lines written here. So, uh, Nothing is important. So reduction in the number of teeth has been feature of primary evolution. Present human the third molar so frequently missing that is. So I told you the whole definition. You can go through it, right? But it's something written the same here. So who needs treatment? Problem with the function, like what, including difficulty in jaw movements. This is something important here. I told you that for the other lines, just make a summary, one line or two lines. Right, and do not read it close to the exam. So, these three things like what who need treatment, psychological problem, number of studies in the recent years have confirmed that institutional behavior appearance can be does not make a difference in teacher expectation, therefore, this, this, this. If interesting, that psychology class by displaying dental patient is not direct proportion to dynamic. So, for these ones, you can give a read. And we know that when it's a class two, the child has these psychosocial problems, you can do a treatment so the child have a feeling of well-being, right? So nothing like what that is important. Yeah, you can make a small one or two liners summary for yourself for this one. In short, it clears the major reason people seek orthodontic is to minimize the cult related to the dental vision pain. These problems are not just cosmetic, they can have a major effect on the quality of life, right? So only like what this thing is important here. That is also for the sake of discussion. Oral health, oral functions, right? So they have discussed it more there in chapter five. Uh, surely effects uh, oral function adapt to well, it appears that the medical usually affect function by making it impossible, but making difficult. For instance, everyone uses their many twins strokes. So 
for me, like, but there's not a lot of important things here. You can make a one or two line summary for it, right? A summary because there's nothing important that we should memorize the whole paragraph. So I told you that you can make a small, there's nothing uh, extreme important here. In the, like what increase or jet, increase incidence of trauma, especially in class two, you can make a summary for this here, right? So nothing that is like what coming in the post-grad level exams, right? Even in the undergrad level exam from these paragraphs, like they can be a part of discussion, but not like what a typical thing. So treatment uh, evidence-based selection. So you must know the definitions and these things, what is a meta-analysis, right? What is a randomized clinical trial? Uh, any professional group comes to each house must list a hierarchy of evidence, yes. And then of course, cases are likely to have less uh, selected because they should expect a clinician. So you can go through these lines, right? And you can read the basic definitions here. And you can make a short summary here. This because they have given like what basic like what definitions here, right? So one basic definition, two basic definitions. Uh, okay, the problem of, of course with cases like like what one outcomes very often do picking up the cases that might come out. One important was controlling the best. So there's clinical trials, there's systematic reviews, there's uh, meta-analysis, right? So I told you, you can, these, there's nothing important. I went through these lines. You simply have to get all the definition for the hierarchy of evidence, right? Like what, what is a case report, what is a clinical trial, what is a controlled clinical trial, just give a read to it, make two or three important lines of it, of which there's nothing important written that I highlight the whole paragraph here, right? You simply have to get a concept that like with these things. So demand for treatment, epidemiology, and these things. So even here, like what they have written these things, several indices, like what, what is an index, right? And for scoring data weight from the normal indicator orthodontic treatment need was proposed in 1970, but not widely accepted for the screening of potential patient. They are, are scoring the severity of melancholy in the peer assessment rating index. Developing that is important to keep them this system constant. Okay. Uh, scores are calculated for the measurements of an EBO, like what you can give it a read, write it to your own words, right? If your scores are calculated similarly, but eventually you have to read what is like what thoroughly read what is uh, peer assessment rating and what is EBO index uh, when it comes to solving questions in a like what in the Asian exams, right? These two or three lines are not enough for the postgrad students. So the IOTN, what is IOTN? Right. So health component divide and outline this thing. There's a surprisingly good correlation between treatment. Okay, this is important. With some allowance of the effects of missing teeth, possible to collect the percentage of use, no, not important, not important. So I do not think that there's any important. So now comes IoT, and initially when you are in first year students, memorize everything like what from this IoT, and over the period of time when you will apply IoT to cases, uh, automatically these things will come on your fingertips, right? And the MOCDO code is not written. You have to see the MOCDO codes from other papers, like what, how to apply IoT because they have just written the grading here, but they don't, haven't told you that how to apply it in the, like at the mock to code. So you need some extra knowledge, right? So I in school compared when happened, this, 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 okay. note that in larger than number of children placed in IoT in four and five as any problem definitely. Not important, not important. That is usually 10% um, of it is not important, white, black, not important who seeks orthodontic treatment. Uh, demand for treatment, both perceived need and vary with the social. Why do patients seek orthodontic treatment? For all these, you can give a read and just write two lines for yourself, right? 
uh, even in lowest intercom, almost five percent using. So this is something not important, like for what I consider. Okay. Today, medical and dental intervention are intended to make individuals better than the well and beyond normal for enhancements. So just a tip, like what when you are in exam, especially for proper contemporary orthodontic, if something is mentioned in italic, always see that what it means, right? So sometimes, like what they give a viva question, what is enhancement? So these things are maintained in italic. So this is basically the examiner mentality to give some definition or ask about the definition when it comes to viva. So for this one, even a read, right? And two or three lines in your own words, in your notes, right? So if I make a small summary for this uh, chapter, you need to uh, memorize the line of occlusion. Uh, you need to uh, memorize like what the type of uh, angle classification. You need to memorize a basic definition of object or by this one and the classifications, right? You need to see that what is X occlusion, right? It's definition. You need to see, you have to read more about the peer assessment rating in the EPO, right? From this chapter, like what you can give or read, but that won't be enough. Even the IOTN, that won't be enough. You have to need to know that what, how it's supplied, the MOVDO code, and when it's supplied, because if it's three, when you, when you go to the static component, so you need some extra knowledge. And there's some few lines, two or three lines that might come in the MCQs, right? So, if you have all these things here, and if you have this chapter one, when you are revising it, it will hardly take like what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But if you go through the chapter uh, again, right, then in that case, it will take another like a two or three hours from you, right? Just reading everything. So the theme is like what, in the first go, because as can students when in the, uh, the first year of post-graduation or when they're undergrads, they do not know how to read it. So. They do not even concept the uh, like what uh, uh, get the basic concept. But once you have given one or two reads uh, to the these any chapter in this book, then start making notes for yourself, right? And start writing in your own words like what two or three lines for the things that, that only give you concept, right? So there are some basic definition which you need to memorize. There's a heart tissue and soft tissue paradigm you need to memorize. The other things you have to make two or three lines for yourself. To save future time, if you keep on reading the book again and again, right, it will be a waste of a lot of time. Yes, sometimes people do not read them thoroughly, and then when they read it again, they get a new concept or they have missed something previously. So go through the book like we spend all your time uh, at the first go, make some notes, uh, go through every line, and do not waste your time. I hope that will be useful. Thank you.